this talk is all about you know consuming open data uh, with data js so we're going to see what do we mean by open data and uh, you know what exactly is open data how do you okay, who is using it uh, who is who is getting it all the stuff data js is an open source javascript library from microsoft so my name is lohit uh, i am one of the members for local microsoft uh, user group user group called b.net uh, we run all the dotnet related or the microsoft related things i am also a telerik insider uh, meaning telerik uh, insider is a program where in elite speakers around 10 or 12 all over the world uh, i'm one of the guys from india uh, they sponsor us for our talks wherever we go they kind of help us with our logistics all the stuff and he said that let's jump right into the session uh, so uh, open data protocol it's a new emerging protocol uh, as you can see it's actually a open protocol for sharing the data uh, now imagine a uh, thing about twitter right we all use how many of you use twitter or four square anybody knowing twitter okay twitter is nothing but a microblogging site and then you have twitter.com for example so you can use twitter over the web but when you are in the mobility you cannot use twitter all the time over the web so what you have is you have other applications like tweet deck or seismic you know uh, desktop and all those up so this is the twitter uh, web version similarly you have other applications like tweet deck which is nothing but an android or a windows phone or a ios so how is that possible that is because twitter shares his data over rest api format and it's consumed can be consumed by anybody uh, if you know how to read that similarly this is a new emerging protocol from microsoft uh, all it uses is it's a plain http you it still uses rest as its kind of governing uh, pattern or architecture meaning every resource is available as a addressable scheme okay you are right uh it uses atom and atom perf atom for read atom perf for publishing meaning writing uh, it uses xml and json as the data exchange format everything is http nothing proprietary microsoft or nothing proprietary any other vendor it's pure http based access all you need to know is rest or atom or atom perf and you should know how to consume uh, json or xml so let me show you how it uh, kind of uh, plays around so this is a open data or how many of you have heard about 70 mm uh, video rental service in bangalore it's nothing but you go sign up you put uh, videos or you know the films in your queue they're going to come to your house and deliver it when you are done call them up they're going to come pick it up and then they're going to give get you the next set of your uh, you know videos similarly in the us netflix is a very widely known uh, you know uh, service all you have to do is sign up for $5 go to your queue put it into the queue and then the video is going to come to your door uh, you know door step so netflix has around i don't know how much maybe thousands of titles available as of now so they have exposed everything of that as open data and this is where you get it it's odata.netflix.com/v2/catalog if you see the uh, url and if you see what is the data they're exposing they're exposing all the genres that are available titles is nothing but the movies so what is odata here if i want to see all my genres all i have to do is just look at the url i am saying catalog/genres that's a collection so i will be taken to that genres collection and then i'll get that data here if you see here that genre has come back to me we have around, they have around 399 genres and one entry is here so this is one piece of one record that i am looking into let's assume i want to dwell directly into that one record i don't want to see anybody else so he, here is the url i can just directly get into that url you just need to know the url so it's going to give me just one one record and this is still http i have not used microsoft dot net or java or jsp or anything this is just a browser a http uri access is http get and i'm getting my data let's assume i don't want all this payload i just want to get the name i'll get my name okay let's assume i still don't want this xml okay i just want the plain text okay yeah, i messed up yeah something's wrong there i'll get you that you are right so 
basically here what happens is I can go and then just try to do all this stuff like I want you to order by is equal to name. It's going to order by you know based on the name, the title, basically title or genre. Okay. So similarly, we have everything available here. It is exposed here. Titles, people, languages, and all those stuff. So this is OData. I didn't use any of the proprietary languages like .NET or Java or anything. All I knew was a REST URI pattern going one by one to the UR other schemes. And then I knew the HTTP get, meaning I knew HTTP. Browser talks HTTP, so it, I can just get the data. So having said this as open data protocol, meaning all this is available just through the HTTP, we're going to see more about you know how modern web applications have been built, basically using all this data centric uh, you know nature. If you see, this is how the modern web apps are built. You have the browser, you have the HTML page, and then you have the server, right? So basic initial request, initial page request, you get everything back, HTML, CSS, plus JavaScript, right? And then afterwards, what we do is, we kind of use Ajax, we make a JavaScript call using Ajax support, that goes to the server, server gives a response, I just get back the chunk of whatever I need. It may be a data, it may be HTML, it may be CSS or whatever it is, or bundled everything as a markup and I get. So this is how the modern web application works nowadays, right? Having said that, we're going to see how OData kind of helps you to build a data centric application and data.js, this is what the JavaScript library from Microsoft is going to help you. So another question comes back is, okay, we are building good, good Ajax apps, right? You know, but is it really great? Uh, there is a re reduced, I mean, basically, if you say it needs to be a great Ajax application, you got to have your network latency kind of reduced. You know, we all have seen, uh, we, are all, we, are, we all have got used to that little circling thing saying like, oh, loading, or Facebook has its bars, right? Somebody has a circle or whatever it is. So we know it is loading. So that's a latency, right? Because you're going at that point of time and then trying to get it. To be a great Ajax app, you got to reduce that latency as far as possible. Plus, you got to make it more interactive and responsive, meaning if there is any lag, yeah, user is going to see, okay, he's going to go now get the data and then respond back. So you got to cut down that interactiveness, or I mean, you got to have more interactiveness and app has to be more responsive. Plus, you got to obviously user experience, you cannot go away without, especially now after 2.0 and all those stuff, you got to have your app a very good user experience. So this is what compromises a great Ajax application, right? Now. With HTML5 coming in, these are the opportunities that we have. You know, for example, local storage, biggest one as far as I've seen, because earlier you couldn't think of caching the data on a client side, right? Now you have the local storage, you have the network support, meaning the web workers are coming in, still in the uh, nascent technology, but still the web workers is going to come in. You have the advanced graphics, you have the media support now, everything. Now, this is where I want to talk about data everywhere means the open data protocol has been embraced by these many people. My slide is only this much, so I have to put five or six slides, but there's a whole bunch of people who are exposing their data as raw data. Whatever I did now, you can go to your houses, have your laptop, or if you have a laptop, do the same thing now. You'll be able to hit the data, get the data. Netflix, eBay, I have an app on eBay where I will show you currently what deals are running with just an HTTP request. Okay? Your Flickr, Flickr is available as a raw data. Then you have Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is very similar to what you have as a forum wherein you go and then ask your question and all this stuff. Plus bunch of uh, people who have already embraced OData. I'm going to show everything now. So having said this context, having this HTML5 opportunities, this many people exposing their data over the wire, over the you know, open as an open world, we're going to see how DataJS kinds of bridges everything and makes it easy for the developers. Okay, so now let's get to one quick demo. The demo currently I'm going to show is, let's first go to eBay. So eBay runs daily deals, right? So this is the deal for the day now. If you see here, I have a Canon, I have the Android tablet, I have a money clip, and then I have the Adidas shoes. These are the current daily deal which is happening. 
Now the same thing is exposed as O data. If you see, eBay is now exposing all this data for public consumption. It's open data now, okay? So now I'm interested in deals. So I'm gonna go to deals. I'm getting the deal. Do you see this? Canon, PowerShot, A3000, IS, 10 MP, refurb. Okay, let's, I think. So it's the same guy, right? Now imagine the opportunity that you have to build up something, maybe on an Android, maybe on a Windows phone or whatever platform that you think of. It's the same guy, Canon, PowerShot, I have that. Nothing fancy, HTTP, just a browser, HTTP get, I know my URI, slash deals, that's the rest protocol coming into picture now. Now the same thing, let me do, uh, I think these guys are hosted on the Azure. Yeah, they, they're, I think eBay partnered with Microsoft to be on this platform and then come out with this uh, OData and then they have a very good uh, uh, application which is running on desktops which uses this. I think it's known as eBay uh, for the people who sell stuff. So now the same thing I'm going to do just with an HTML, a jQuery. Okay, let me show this. Just to say that I am using jQuery. I hope everybody is familiar with this syntax. I'm doing nothing but dot ajax, a URL. I'm telling the data type I need. I need to say JSONP because I'm going cross domain, right? I'm running from a localhost but accessing eBay.com, so I'm doing a cross domain. So I'm just saying JSONP. Here's the URL. Just look at the URL. All I'm trying to do is, do is, hey, get me the deals, but I want the top 10, but I want you to order by title. This is your data. Just imagine if today, if somebody has to write a web service which supports this, you need methods like get deals by name, get deals by title, get deals, then pass, start parameter, end parameter, page, blah, blah, blah. All this is gone with your data. You play around with your URL. You say top 10, order by, you can put any order by that you want. I'm just saying order by the title, okay? So having said that, this is what I'm doing. On DOM ready, I have a button. On the button click, I'm gonna say go get, do the data request. Here's the data request. I need to give a callback because it's a JSONP. And then once I get a callback, all I'm doing is, I know the results, I'm looping through the results, and then I'm gonna put it to the div. Let's hope the demo works. Okay, so I have the get data. Right? So, if you go back, that's what I have. Okay, let's bring in some my Windows 7 stuff. So, I hope everybody knows this, this is Aero Snap. Right? All I had was HTML, jQuery, that's it, right? Now, so, so, yeah, I mean, I told, order it by title. These guys, I don't know what order they are doing it. So I told, do it by uh, title, so A, C, M, N. So that's what the O data will provide you, okay? So having said that, so this is just, I want to bring in the point about data everywhere, right? You saw the eBay. Now I can go and do the same stuff with OD, uh, Netflix. So now I'm going to show one more uh, important uh, thing from my side because it's the local storage demo. So. What local storage does is, so this is just a simple app, right? I'm trying to show uh, how a local storage works. Uh, with HTML5 coming in, you have the concept of DOM storage, or it is also known as web storage, or a local storage, right? I have a simple app. If I write something here, and I say store data, now this piece of information is now stored permanently on my system now, okay? Let me clear this, and I say get data, I got it back, right? Okay, if you are saying I'm bluffing, so let's bring it back again, it's empty, I say get data, whatever I stored, I got it back, right? My session was over, but still I got it back, that's because that's the power of local storage. Now that is coming in with modern browsers like IE9, Chrome, Firefox, everybody is now supporting the DOM storage, right? So 
these two kind of play a very key important role data everywhere meaning everybody giving you the open data plus you have these concepts like storage you know all those available so having said that we saw how jquery can be used is it something different the data js not entirely but you saw how you had to write four lines of things saying like this is a json pe i need you to use this qrl and you know, all those stuff now data js what it does is it is doing lot many of this stuff that you have to as a programmer have to take care individually with just one framework as a open source javascript library called data js it is leveraging capabilities what capability the local storage capability it will go and then kind of cache the data it will inherently within the net uh, the framework will allow you to cache your data it can be a dom storage if it is available tomorrow when the index db is available it will quickly switch over itself to the index db if none of them are available you are on a older platform it's going to go and then do an in memory caching okay but it will provide you the cache it's resilient to network meaning it can do prefetching i mean i think i have a somewhere a smart free prefetch prefetching is nothing but you know it's it's not new this terminology is not new uh, people would kind of program it in such a way that if you have a page and showing you are showing 10 uh, records at a time i would go in the background fetch next 10 records and then keep it when user says go next i already have the data then i go and then prefetch next 10 so it's kind of kind of net uh, cutting down the response like uh, you know waiting time when the user says next i don't want to smart i mean uh, wait till the user says next i will prefetch something so this is auto built all you need to do is set a keyword and it's going to prefetch whatever data you have cross domain you would need uh, you don't need to do anything for example you saw me saying like data type is json p call back is equal to i put something data js will handle it for you all you need to worry is what is your query when the query is downloaded what is your callback that you want to work so you just give the reference to that so no browser difference the data js is platform supported in terms of windows mac os and in terms of browsers ie firefox chrome all those stuff the cache do uh, cache data is there so it's the same code predominantly you you don't need to change anything right so let's see the data js now so what i have done is currently i have downloaded i don't know the i'm not sure if you guys are able to see this very clearly or not but uh, let me try to zoom in is it better so this is the library the data js i'll give you the coordinates where to get that from all you need is it's very similar to whatever you have so i just downloaded data js and i put it into my application and if you are wondering what this editor is i work on microsoft.net stack so this is my editor the visual studio but you can do this on any uh, you know editors that you know of maybe a php editor or whatever there is nothing microsoft here it's only plain html i am just using this editor because i'm used to this so i have my uh, file data js file plus bunch of jquery's here um, one is jquery 1.6.4 i have the jquery ui uh, minified i have the template minified now the same ebay example so here you see is the same example i'm going to go to ebay get the deals but let's see how we do it with data js data js once you import it so all i have done is i gone ahead and then i said i set the reference to data js plus i have the reference to the jquery the normal stuff and then all i am doing is same i have a button and the button click now look at this i need to worry only about my url okay i said deals give me the top 10 out of my title now look at the api feature that what data is providing for us data js is providing they have a uh, object called what data all you have to uh, say is read here is the query here is the callback okay so same on get data response all i am doing is same code but it's data js is kind of i'll tell you what other things uh, it's happening here if you notice the ebay deals we had written earlier 
is anybody familiar with d dot results anybody who uses json they know that different people have different way of representing the data set somebody say d dot results somebody has directly the result they wrap wrap the json directly as a result somebody wrap it as date d and then results in all the stuff now having said that data js is different here it takes care of multiple different versions that the server may have it but for it as a developer it is always results it i don't have to care about is it dot d or is it something or anything now all i have to care is okay i got the data data has the results so that's all i am doing here so now if we run this guy so nothing fancy same okay this is a alert which is coming because data js is trying to access cross domain okay in in we have not told data js that hey you should support jsonp yet right but it's trying to do that so the browser is alerting you so it's not the the data js framework so it's going to go it's going to get the same thing there's nothing much change now if we have to just you know since i know ebay and since i kind of uh, approve their whatever data they have all i have to say is enable the jsonp callback is equal to true i don't have to worry about suffixing callback in the url then saying data type is jsonp nothing you know as a programmer this is what i need i am more used to hey, you tell me as a api is there a switch where i can say true false yes fine so that's all i have done right now if you think this is kind of rudimentary this is not right we can use the templating feature so i have the same template going around here and then i am all i am saying is hey here is a template take that here is the data you kind of append it to this result so nothing fancy again going on right so it still work right the point here i am trying to make is o data or the data js is trying to provide you a very rich api here you don't have to worry about the server implementation it takes care of it for you it's just results and then you saw it's just a switch to say enable jsonp callback yes and then that's all right now we're going to see about caching i talked about caching so yeah predominantly the data js works assuming that it's a json but if you think you need your your server is not sending you a json but it's an xml there are ways to go ahead and then put your handler kind of you know it knows your xml and then you can play around so currently inbuilt default assumes jsonp json it's coming as a json so it's giving you as a kind of api internally it's even if it's a jquery or even if it is a uh, any other guy who supports ajax it's all xml http you know object at the background internally it's all pure javascript code it's not there may be little bit touches of jquery but it doesn't depend on jquery because i can remove jquery and then i can still work on data js but if i do that then i won't be having the support of the templating or else i have to loop so data js in the source code it's pure javascript there's nothing jquery bits here and there because you can remove jquery have data js you can still you know get the data you know do but then you would have to write all the plumbing you got the data loop go through each one of them you won't get the templating because you don't have the jquery if you put jquery use data js to get the data use jquery to use the templating output the data So now here's the interesting stuff. I talked about local storage. Now, Data JS has an inbuilt mechanism to do all those stuff. I don't have to tell anything. So they have. So the, here is what I'm trying to do. I let me show you how many genres are available at. Uh, so this is the genres, right? So they have 399 records of genres available in their system. Okay. 
here is another tidbit about odata just imagine if you had to do this in a today's web service somebody is trying to say hey how, how what is the count of your genres you would need a separate web method get me count of genres then they have to return that so here all you have to do is at the end just suffix dollar count so this is odata specific odata protocol specification which says you should support this if you are a odata you should support this so i have 399 records now one interesting thing that DataJS provides is temp, uh, the caching feature. So they have what is known as a cache available. Is the font visible for everybody? Yeah. Okay. So this is a cache. All I am doing is I am saying, hey, I want to name this cache as genres because since it's a local uh, storage, you know, it's maybe used every uh, used by any application that you run. So you got to name it very specific to your naming conventions and then have it kind of unique. So then all I'm saying is, hey, you know what, for you the source is this collection, the genres. And then I have set a page size, meaning when you, when you cache, I want you to cache this much data. And then I'm saying prefetch. Fine, you go and then get maybe one, record, one page record, which is 10, plus you prefetch next 10. Okay, so if you see here, I have said prefetch 10 and I have said minus 1, I will come back to that what minus 1 means. I have my template here. So what I do is when the page loads, I am calling get data. So what get data does is all it is going to do is just this much. Cache, read a range. What is the range? Here is the starting point and I want you to fetch, fetch this much. Once fetch is done, then do the uncomplete. So then is a deferred way in the jQuery, if you use jQuery, then is like a deferred delegate. Right? Only once this is done, the control passes here. So it's a deferred delegate that jQuery provides. So all I have done is, I set my cache. Once you declare cache, it doesn't get the data. You have to say, hey, read from that. Okay, so that's what being done here. So on page load, we go and load first 10 records in the collection. Okay, then I have a link which says get more data. Yeah, so I just have one link which says get more data and I am calling the same thing. I would have advanced my page from 0 to 1 or something like that. So let's see this. Okay, now I want to show one feature of IE9 which is the developer tools. One new feature of the developer tools is now we can see what my page is going out of network. The, I can do the network sweeping. So I am going to start capturing. Let me come back again. You don't see any, uh, I don't know how to blow it up, it's very small. You don't see any data, I mean any request going out to uh, Netflix. That is because I had already run it, it's cached. So just to prove the point, let me clear the cache, whatever it is. Okay, now I have cleared the cache. Keep looking on the right hand side here, I'm going to refresh my page. Did you, did you see the two things? Okay, now here is the interesting part. Let me try to zoom it up. Just keep looking at the top. It says, skip the 0, go and get me the 10. That's the cache being read. Right? I just gave only one call for the read and I said 0 to 10. Now what is this guy? Skip 10, get me another 10. So that's the prefetcher. Okay? But I didn't do anything. I just said page size is 10, prefetch is 10. Okay, now keep looking at, let me turn this off. Do you see the third going in there? I had, initially I had done only 0 to 10. Now I clicked again to say get more data, right? But my data was already there. So this guy went and then prefetch 20 to 30. Right? So, 
if we turn off all this stuff and if you don't want to notice there just keep noticing on the left hand side how fast it is so now it went right but now if i click i already have the page so it's going to come immediately right now let's assume you have a situation wherein no i don't want to do the prefetching like this i will show first page of 10 records but in the background i want you to go get me everything okay so simple all you need to do is make the page prefetch size to minus 1 meaning hey i don't have a number go keep getting it okay now look at the beauty what happens so we are clearing the cache every time we are uh, refreshing the page boom it showed me the first page right look at this what is happening so he's going to keep going and then storing it now i'll show you what happens when i click on more data let this finish there are around 399 i have page set page size as 10 so it's going to go 46 times no what it's doing is it's chunking it's not getting all in one shot uh-huh. No, it's, it's nothing but you're breaking the chunk and the load that it's going out, right? If you say, oh, get me 399, your bandwidth is going to get choked. So all we are doing is we are chunking that and saying, okay, get 10 by 10 by 10. So it's, it's, it's a concept that, you know, most of the applications use, which is known as a prefetching that is getting chunks. What if, for example, I just gave you an example of minus one. You may have a situation wherein you want everything, but you want in pieces right now look at what happens my data is already there i don't have to worry about anything so this is responsiveness that i was talking about okay i have think i yeah okay if you are asking that way i'll show you one more smartness that we have L- I'm going to turn off prefetch size, okay? I will not sell, uh, tell the uh, data.js what is my prefetch size. But I'm going to tell data.js, hey, my page size is 10. Just look at what happens now. Page fetch size is 10. Okay. The way this works is, they take a look at, the queue is page size. So although I turned off my prefetch size, you see that it still is doing 10. Okay, I don't know if you guys can can see that or not, but it's doing 10. I'll tell you why. So that is because I set my page size as part of my cache definition. Now I remove this. But remember that I have told, give me 10. If you see the read that I am doing, I am saying, I want you to go 0 till 10, right? But the cache definition, I have not told what is my page size, I have not told what is the prefetch size, right? Still it's going 10 by 10. Um, Somewhere I have missed something. What they do is, they go and then, uh, in in theoretically what they do is, they go and then prefetch a huge size, like they, I think close to 300 is what they go and prefetch, 250 or something, they prefetch it. If you have not told anything, you are saying I want only 10, but there is no prefetch being already told for it. So they go and fetch 250. So it's already there. So it won't go back again. Now, for example, if I remove the cache.clear here and I do a next, it won't go. It's already there. Some amount of data is already there. So these are all inbuilt. There are lot many stuff uh, you can play around with. Now I'm going to show one, uh, actually the live real world application that I built using just this much. So it's known as Netflix catalog. Actually this is available as an open source. You can, anybody who is interested in how you develop using O data and all this stuff, you can go and then uh, go to netflixcatalog.codeplex.com. You'll get the whole source code. This is built completely using JavaScript, jQuery, Data.js, and then it is hitting Netflix catalog, whatever you saw. Now, just imagine how with that open data, you can develop like this. 
I don't know if you guys can see everything. Okay, now I have to do this. I will go and then get some Kannada movies, okay? See this? There is nothing .NET here or a Java here or a JSP here or a PHP here, nothing. It's plain HTML O data. And this is just some crazy styling that I have done. Okay? Each bit of here is exposed there. This is one record exposed with this many properties. You know, the title is here, release here, rating, minutes, description. Uh, it's the box art, as they say. Uh, it's the average rating. I'm going, reading, getting it. And I'm caching this stuff. There are 399 records here, there are 99 records here. I'm caching that because I don't need it every time. But I don't cache this guy. Uh, I cache movies only when something has not changed. For example, I have a paging available here. So I have only one page available now for this guy, okay? Similarly, you can do everything. You, if you want, you can go and say, um, you know, So I'm, I'm doing a search now. I said Kuhn, so it's giving me Kuhn or Pani and all the stuff. Okay, so all this is possible using Data.js. Here is another quick example that I built. This is for actually, um, I don't know if I can show this or not, but still. I know. So I don't know, you gotta ask Hugh Hefner for that. <laughs> okay, this is a small app that we built for, I mean, I built for the city of uh, Vancouver. Uh, if you see there, you see the O data there. Uh, it's actually the council of uh, Vancouver city is exposing all their expenses data as a O data. So here's a quick chart we did. So it's going now to that O data, fetching the council expense data. These are all, these are all our you know, council members. And this is saying, okay, they have spent this much amount of you know money. So this O data fed to the government stuff. I don't know if I can show this, but don't tell anybody that I've showed you here. But yes, this kind of apps is possible. And I have built it only data.js, jQuery. O data as being the data source, okay? So that was a quick demo about, you know, this. So there are other capabilities like, I didn't show you the right part of it. That is the most fun part of uh, Data.js. You can actually do full CRUD using Data.js, okay? There is batching. I can batch two requests in one call. There are metadata. I can, re I can pull down the metadata of your uh, service and then check out what is everything. See, works over web storage are in memory as of now, but it will light up when index DB is available. So it's already built up for that. So if you use data.js, you don't have to worry when you go to index DB. Today, if you're using something else, if index DB comes up, you gotta change your data to kind of do everything. But use data.js with more data, you have everything. Supported platform on Windows, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, Chrome, Mac, your yeah, Windows Phone also supported now, iOS, Android, you know, on all platform, Data.js library will work. So where do you download Data.js? Just go here, datajs.codeplex.com. Any Q&A? I think I have three minutes or two minutes. Oh, my, I find a query and I cache first time So assume I update the data in the backend. So the next time when you come, you look at the cache, does it have any way that you can see? The, I think... Uh, I don't know if I put that future capability, but that is one thing they're working on. Uh, currently, since it's local storage, we have no mechanism of knowing whether it changes something. Maybe it's in the, uh, you know, kind of down the line that they'll try to ping something and then check out on that one. Any question? Uh, data JS licensing terms of? Whatever uh, producers, we call it as producers, Netflix, as of now, this is not a mission critical data or it is not a sensitive data that has been exposed. 
is just a bunch of movie catalog or a ebay deal or something like that what i showed you van council expense it's actually a real bbmp you, it's very similar to bbmp in bangalore right so it's a council in uh, somewhere in city of vancouver canada okay they have exposed their council expenses okay as a raw data you as a consumer as a general public write up an app put it and say hey you guys are spending like this that's the promotion of raw data we want a data which is actually open for example all this stuff the tax the whatever bbmp does yes put it open so that i can write something like this visualize something like this and then go question back so that is the uh, promotion where we are trying to say raw data can help okay Raw data as such has no specification on the this one, but you bring in your .NET or your Java or anything, build a membership API kind of stuff. This guy is all about exposing. The spec is all about how I expose the data. The uh, checks that you want to put is your app, your your kind of maybe a credential, maybe a certificate or anything. Any other? Yeah, you had one. That's what. So you got to write as a producer. Open data is a specification of all those stuff you saw. Here is a collection. Collection I can browse like this. Here is a top keyword. Here is a skip keyword. Uh, here is the order by. Here is the. So the specification is all about how do you expose the data. It doesn't deal with authentication, authorization, anything. You use O data in your whatever language you want, whatever technology you want. bring in your checks for example if i host this on ias i can cut down authentication and authorization on ias saying like only allow these guys right data js is just a open to you know to reach out to that open data any other questions i can wrap up okay uh, if you anybody wants to reach me i am available here about.me/kashyap i tweet with uh, this uh, hashtag i mean the twitter handle kashyap thank you Thank you.